Jeff Taylor is an entrepreneur. He is founder of Monster.com and now founder and CEO of Eons.com. Eons.com might be said to be the, the next chapter of the baby boomer, both lifestyle and indeed work style. I started out with this idea of creating this company called Eons, which was about living your life uh, and actually taking on new experiences, maybe graduating really legitimately into things that you love to do, as opposed to many of us have worked jobs that maybe we didn't like as much. Tell us more about your experience with Eons, because in many ways it's been an odyssey in itself in terms of uh, not just understanding the boomers, but understanding how they would be using the web. Four key pillars in your life seem to make a lot of sense. The, the first one was health, money, family, and then the fourth one was fun. I think I'm, in a way, a one-man crusade to try to make men more interesting. I, I think we're really like, uh, and, and I'm not even saying I'm interesting, I'm just saying that, uh, I don't know, the point is women open up like a flower and men just close right up to nothing. And this idea of visualizing your future and a positive one, I think it's something we all could take that lesson. It sounds like one of the lessons we ought to think about as an organization, be they public or private, is to set up the framework to engage the communities and frankly just get out of the way. Across the country, in some places, metropolitan areas in particular, it's easier to make friends, but it's still hard. Your friendship circles when you're in high school uh, is, is as big as you want it. When you're in college or if you choose another path, it tends to be a big friendship circle. First job tends to be a big friendship circle, and then the friendship circle starts to get smaller. And at some time around 50, that friendship circle is quite small. The most trusted source of advice, be it professional or otherwise, other people like you. The idea of a referral is still a coveted referral. Our recommendation, and I think this is true for all of our business uh, that we're trying to do in this, is that the referral of something they're very excited about, you're not used to telling a thousand people about it. You're used to telling a few people, a handful of people about it. And that's very generational, uh, you know, difference in terms of what I've seen. I mean, we're living in a very exciting and interesting world where you have to be virtual before you can be real first. If you meet new friends online, the first thing you want to do is then go meet them offline. People who have known each other online for four or six months and have been sharing a lot of information, they meet in person, can't stop smiling. You actually have legitimate friends. And this is one of the things I think people have said, ah, the computer, blah, whatever. But people are making legitimate, really good friends online. Because groups are where you share your passions and where you meet somebody else that really likes to read three books a week or somebody else that really likes to cook. That this idea that there was a line in the sand for your friendships didn't make any sense to me. Whether it's eons or whether it's Facebook or whether it's a local uh, a group of friends that gets together, it's this communication that is all the power, I think, for our generation. It's always the way we've done things, if you think about it. But it's, I think it's particularly true online where you might not know the people. It appears that the boomers are becoming 77 million segments of one. And we've got LinkedIn, we've got MySpace, Facebook, uh, Eon. We, we've got a variety of ways. How does an area agency on aging who might want to get information out there about, say, telemonitoring or a company who wants to engage all these segments of one, what's going on with these groups that they can learn to, to seize that opportunity? There's so many brands for people in their 20s and 30s. There weren't any brands, really, that I thought were targeted to people in their 50s and 60s, per se. The baby boomer has the disposable income, maybe not at this moment, but I think have had it and will absolutely have it again. And the buying power of this age group uh, is, it's huge. I think generally speaking, boomers still like their newspaper. They may have canceled their daily subscription because they're embarrassed about it sitting out in the driveway, uh, but there's a lot of Sunday morning cups of coffee that are being taken in with the New York Times. I think it's just about, uh, about resetting expectations. I think we're gonna live a little longer, a little healthier, and there is gonna be a higher set of expectations. You can't decide when you're 80 that you're gonna start running for the first time in your life. It's not a good, it's not a good plan. But even for all of us here now, deciding that you're going to work out and make small changes in your life for your health, uh, these are things that will make you live a longer life. And maybe not every one of us, but in general, in norm, it will. Don't give up on the things you love. Keep trying to learn more about them. In my community, the people that are really vibrant are the people that are taking on new ideas and taking on new responsibilities. Jeff Taylor, thank you very much. Keep aging fun.